the second to last day at work, and I go, I have to go see this guy where he's living. And I park on the curb directly opposite from D'Angelo's house. There's a car in the driveway. I'm pretty sure he's home. And I'm sitting there, and I'm wondering, what's the likelihood, really, that this is the Golden State Killer? A day before his retirement, Paul Holt literally has the suspect in his crosshairs. It's been a 20 Hey, be nice, kiddies. And turns in his badge the next day. It was a tough decision to, to drive away from that house that day. I was upset. You hear that in there, Bob? I didn't solve this case before I retired. The Sacramento Sheriff's Office picks up for Paul Holt. Yeah, let's see how legendary you are. This player's name is legendary. And they secretly follow him to a shopping plaza. But Joseph was not smoking. He was not spitting out gum. So what they had to work with was he had a car. They swabbed the door handle. And that gave them something that's called touch DNA. They were able to pick up an initial DNA sample and some fingerprints from his car door. I'm sitting in a Chinese restaurant in Colorado Springs, and my cell phone rings, and it's Lieutenant Kirk Campbell from Sacramento DA's office. You can absolutely not tell anybody about this. And at that moment, I go, okay. And he says, the lab is excited about this. It's mixed with DNA from other people, but it looks like it might be a close match. The, the Sacramento DA was saying, we want a cleaner sample. So they stake out his house, wait for him to put out the trash, Puts his trash out on the curb. We get a guy that comes and collects the trash. They sneak over and pull tissue out of the trash bin and take that back to the lab. And one of the items out of the trash had a single source male DNA profile that matched 100% the Golden State Killer's DNA profile. <laughs> first words are, are you sitting down? And I asked him a million times, and I'm like, you better not be messing with him. He goes, they're shaking, Amory. They're shaking at the crime lab. They got a match, but now they have to get the suspect into custody. So they call Paul Holt back to assist with the operation. There was concerns about how he would respond if this did not go smoothly. I can imagine they're prepared for every scenario. This is somebody who has been a sophisticated, a diverse, sadistic killer. A law enforcement team now gathers outside D'Angelo's home for the takedown. He and his wife have been separated for decades, and he's living with his daughter and granddaughter. And the hope was is to get him away from his house in order to be able to do it safely. So at a certain point, D'Angelo's over off to the side of his house. It looks like a prime spot. And we just hear over the radio. You know, you want to know what I'm battling right now, Mom? What? A bunch of pumpkin heads. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and quite literally, too. Because they have jack-o'-lanterns on their heads. Yellowing of the skin or eyes, dirt, 
Can they shut up for five seconds about the election? It gets old after a while. Yeah, I know. The virus thing is starting to get old, too. Okay, let, let me... Virus, the riots, the presidential election. All that. It gets old. And I wonder why people get COVID fatigue. Because they're sick of it. He looks evil just by just by looking at him. I mean, screw the scary stuff of Halloween. He's stuff of true nightmares. Before I die, we can finally put a face 